I love chestnuts and I keep seeing them at the grocery store. So I finally got some and I'm going to try roasting them. Now I thought I could do it in the oven, but I just realized that the Airbnb I'm staying at does not have a tray in the oven. So that's off the list. So I can either boil them or roast them in a pan. I don't know, boiled are fine, I guess, but I really like the roasted kind. So I'm going to attempt to roast them in a regular skillet. Everything I've seen is talking about a cast iron skillet, so we shall see how this goes. So the first step is that you have to make an X in the chestnut to let the steam out, otherwise they will explode when you're cooking them. It's really hard to get the shell off, but when I just made an X on this one, the shell like is coming off, so I don't know. Maybe I did too hard of an X. They say it's kind of hard to roast in a regular pan like this and that it's easier if you soften them. So I'm gonna put them in this pot and put this boiling water in here and just let them soak for a few minutes and then I'll drain them and dry them and then I'll stick them in here. So now I'm gonna make X's on the rest of these. This one, another thing I read is that if they have pinholes in them like this, that means that there's like worms got into it. So that's gonna go in the trash. And then I will cut the rest of these. Oh, also this one has a sprout. I looked it up online. It said if it's not longer than like an inch or something, it's usually okay. Otherwise it can just taste a little funky. I don't think they're bad to eat when it has a sprout. I think it just tastes a little bit uh, like funky. I didn't know there was like a specific way to pick out chestnuts. I just took a big scoop and put it in the bag. So this is all new to me. That first one was really easy. This one is much harder. Maybe that was just like an old one or something. This one's much harder to cut. X. Oh, that was really deep. Somebody online had said that if you cut like deep into the nut, you kind of just want to do the shell because if you cut deep, they turn out drier. So um, I probably will have really dry chestnuts because I can't seem to only cut the shell. I'm always kind of nervous with small knives because I've, well, I don't know if you can see that scar there, but I've already had knife incident before and I don't want to have another one. If it's easier for me to just do a big cut, then whatever, I'd rather have dry chestnuts than cut my hand open again. So that's how it's gonna be. Oh shit, okay, that one's gonna have no problem not exploding, I just cut it in half. You can see that the inside of the shell has kind of like this furry layer. Oh, good. Another one that I cut in half. Not very good at this. Oh, shoot. Whoa. Ugh. Ugh, ugh, ugh. I don't know what's going on. I'm just cutting through all of these. I'm all finished. These two had panels in them, so bye bye. They're going in the trash. Now I'm going to add some hot water. So they're all covered. And then be back in a few minutes to add them to the pan. There's my soaked chestnuts. I, I ended up soaking them for 10 minutes. They're pretty when they're all dark and shiny like that. So I'm gonna put them in the pan. They said to put them in a single layer and I think you do the cut side up. Now some of them said you just do oil and salt and then some of them said to add a little bit of water. I don't know. Ah, time to put on a nice open flame. Just kidding. Let's add a little bit of water. Oops, my kettle's almost empty. We'll add a little bit of water so that kind of steams it up. Oh, my kettle's empty. Water part two. 
Okay, I think that's good. I don't know what I'm doing. Once the water evaporates... Okay, is this lid filthy or what? Much better. So... Oops. I think it has to cook for like another 15 to 20 minutes once the water evaporates. And the key is that you have to keep moving the pan so that it doesn't burn and get all blackened. So once this water evaporates, I'm gonna really have to monitor the pan and make sure that it doesn't get all burnt and gross. Get that steam going up. They're really boiling now. I am wondering if I added too much water, maybe. I don't know. If this evaporates really quickly, then I think it'll be okay. I just don't want them to be all like mushy and boiled tasting. I want them to still be able to get a nice roasted flavor. Now would be a perfect time to crack open a beer. I'll show you what I'm gonna be drinking. Elvis Juice, Grapefruit Infused IPA. United we stand for better beer. And the reason I picked this is because it said fiercely defined and independent. So I like that. The craft beer section at Reve cracks me up. It's basically like a bookshelf that has these beers on it. It's a really tiny section. Um, and even though they're craft beer, like this was only a buck 99. I don't think it says the IBUs on it. The most IBUs I've been able to really find are like maybe 55. So they're not very high in IBUs, but you know, whatever. Probably still tastes good. So let's try it out. I just read online that an IPA should have an IBU between 60 and 80. All the IPAs I've seen at the store here are like 55. So I don't, I don't know. Is that a real IPA then? <laughs> I don't know. Whoops. Stopped right before the end of the table. Yeah. It smells kind of like, I don't know, stinky feet or something. The, <laughs> the IPA I had the other day had like a really nice bitter hoppy smell. The, maybe it's the grapefruit that's making it have like a weird sour smell. Mmm. Mmm. It's not very good. I don't really like it. It tastes very watery too. I might have to dump it. Oh wait, I did a tour at the Sierra Nevada Brewing Company one time and they said you need to take at least three sips before your taste buds like fully decide on the flavor. So I think I should take two more and then decide whether I dump it or not. Okay, still disgusting. Hmm. I don't know. I don't enjoy it. I don't think I'll drink it. Your motto gave me so much hope. You've let me down. Wow, look at that. The water is now like brown colored and it's evaporated quite a bit. Probably in the next 10 minutes or so, I'm guessing it'll probably be totally evaporated. And then at that point, I'll just continue to like stir it and Make sure that doesn't get burned. Okay, that was not even 10 minutes later. It's only been a few minutes and look, all the water is gone now. So I'm going to, oh shit, there's stuff. Okay, hold on a minute. Okay, this is why you should put oil in the pan. Uh oh, oh no. <gasps> okay, yikes. I think they're done probably. I think I boiled them. To, oh no, no, I want it pan roasted. Okay, I'm gonna take this little piece out and see if it's ready. They stink in a bad way. Oh yeah, they're definitely ready. Mm. Who cares about oven roasted? They're delicious. Now the next step is that you have to peel 
these skins off really quickly because they harden fast. So we're gonna take the skins off and then it's snack time. Oh God, watch your hands. Oh geez, they're hot. How the hell do you peel them when they're burning your hands off? Hot. Mm. Oh, they're so good. Okay, because the water evaporated quickly, they actually did get a nice toasted flavor to them. You can see the shell is all nice and dark and steaming. Well, I didn't really follow the uh, instruction, but I think they turned out pretty darn good. Hot as hell though. So you just peel it. Look at that. Yum, it looks almost like a walnut, huh? Mm, can't stop eating them. See, this one is more difficult to peel off because I didn't cut it all the way through. It looks more yellow though, like maybe it's more moist inside. The other ones are a little bit more beigey white, like maybe they got more dry. <laughs> okay, prepare to burn the crap out of your fingertips. So you can kind of see like, this one got boiled, the, oh, the skin was really open and the skin was more closed. See the difference in color? One's more yellow and one's more of like a beige. The yellow one is more firm. See this one, that second fuzzy coat is sticking to it more. Oh jeez. There's my extremely unattractive bowl of chestnuts. I sprinkled a little bit of sea salt on them. They're very good though. My verdict on the chestnuts is that I actually think the accident ones I did where I cut through all the way turned out better because they're softer and I don't know, I think I like the flavor better too and they were much easier to peel. So I don't think it's a big deal if you cut through all the way. And I think actually boiling it kind of in the pan with water turned out perfect because they still got a little roasted but they, they didn't explode and they were nice and moist inside. If you liked my little chestnut tutorial, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye.